So let's talk a little more about the energy involved in forming a solution. So we can think of the solution formation as occurring in three steps. So in the first step, we've got our solute, and we have to separate the solute into its individual particles. And that's going to be endothermic. We're going to have to put energy in because these solute particles are attracted to each other by an intermolecular force. And so in order to get them to separate, we're going to have to put energy in. So delta H for this process is going to be greater than zero. Put energy in. The second step would be separating the solvent molecules. So here we have, it's blue, it's in a beaker, kind of looks like it's water. Here, let's just say we have water molecules. In order to get a solute to mix in here, we have to separate the solvent particles from each other. And that's also going to be endothermic for the same reason. We're separating, we're breaking some intermolecular forces. So delta H for this, for separating the solvent, is also greater than zero. So far, it doesn't look very good for forming a solution. The third step is now mixing these separated particles together. This process is going to be exothermic because now we've got forces of attraction between the solvent and the solute particles. Depending on what kind of particles they are, it might be very weak, but even a very polar hydrogen bonding molecule like water has dispersion forces and can interact with something like hexane. Here we're looking at the separated particles mixing together, so we call this delta H mix. That's going to be less than zero. Any questions so far? So the enthalpy of solution, or the heat of forming the solution, is the sum of those changes. Separating the solvent, separating the solute, and then putting them together. Two of those are positive and one's negative. The overall sign of delta H depends on the magnitudes of those individual terms. So when a solution forms, it may be exothermic or endothermic. So you can have, um, when a solution forms, you can have the solution become colder as it's absorbing energy from the surroundings and endothermic, or it may release heat, becoming warmer because it has more energy now as it's giving off energy to the surroundings. So here's illustration of the two processes. So an exothermic, um, solution forming. You've got your solvent by itself and your solute by itself. You're separating the solute, then you're separating the solvent, and then you're allowing them to mix together. So we have to put energy in to separate the particles, and then we, when we let them come together, it releases energy. In this in instance, the energy released by the mixing is greater than the sum of the energies that we had to put in to separate. And so overall, we have a, an exothermic process. In an endothermic solution, we have, we have to put energy in to separate the solute, to separate the solvent, and then we get energy released when they mix, but this energy is less than the total that we had to put in. And so the net result is that the solution as it forms is going to absorb energy from the surroundings. And it's gonna get cold. You can use a solution like this to make an, an instant hot pack, and you can make a solution like this to make an instant cold pack. You mix the two things and it gets cold all by itself like magic. Any questions? We are mostly interested here in aqueous solutions of ionic compounds, things like dissolving salt in water. So we can take this equation here, I'll just highlight it because this is the overall one. So the heat of solution is equal to the heat involved in separating the solute particles plus the heat involved in separating the solvent molecules plus the heat involved in mixing. We add those up. These two are positive and the mixing is negative. And so depending on their magnitudes, our heat of solution could be positive or negative. 
So for aqueous solutions of ionic compounds, we can combine the solvent and the mixing into one term called the heat of hydration. So these two terms become the heat of hydration, and that's defined as the enthalpy change when one mole of gaseous solute ions is dissolved in water. It's gaseous solute ions because we're not looking at the solute ions separating from each other. That's this separate term. Here we're looking at the already separated particles mixing together. This heat of hydration is always exothermic, negative, and fairly large for ionic compounds in water because the forces of attraction here are ion dipole forces. So the, the dipoles in the water molecules are attracted to the ions of the ionic compound. And that is strong, that's stronger than the hydrogen bonding that's holding the water together. This term, delta H solvent, is the energy needed to separate the water molecules so that they can let the solute in. This is going to be a positive value. We have to put energy in to separate the water molecules. When we mix the water molecules with the ionic compound, we're going to form ion dipole forces. The ion dipole forces are stronger than the hydrogen bonds that we broke. And so this is going to be a negative number. This number is going to, this value is going to be positive. Separating those ions into their individual pieces is going to require energy. Any questions so far? Now, that heat of solute, of separating the solute particles, that is the same value as that lattice energy we learned about. Remember, lattice energy is when you take two ions in their gas state and you allow them to come together and form a solid. You get a lot of energy released because of the attractions that are forming between those oppositely charged ions. This heat of solute is the opposite. It's taking the solid ionic compound and separating into ions in the gas state. So it's the same value, just opposite in sign. So whether the solution forming is exothermic or endothermic depends on the magnitudes of these two um, terms. So if the heat of solute, if that lattice energy is much bigger than the, I'm sorry, less than the heat of hydration, we're going to have an exothermic process. It's going to release energy. The solution will become warmer. If the heat of solute, the opposite of the lattice energy, is larger than the heat of hydration, this is going to be an endothermic process because more energy has to be put in to break up that lattice than is released when the solution forms. Any questions? <laughs>